Okay, so now you can hear me? Yes, I yeah, can hear you. I'm unmuted now. <coughs> okay, then, um, yeah, hello everyone and uh, welcome to my presentation today. This is uh, my uh, first one uh, presentation I'm holding in the New York meetup and my third overall in the MU meetup. It's a great pleasure and uh, honor for me to have this opportunity. Let's start uh, with some facts about myself. So I'm uh, working in IT software engineering industry for approximately 15 years now. And uh, topics I have been working on so far uh, cover business intelligence and also data integration and training solutions. My current focus when uh, working with Mule uh, lies on uh, APIs using highly parallel processing capabilities and interacting with the Teradata Vantage. I also hold a Mulesoft certified developer certification level one. And yeah, for those of you who uh, are interested to gain more, more information uh, about my uh, background and myself, then you are welcome to visit my LinkedIn profile, which can be reached uh, via this link I've supplied here. <laughs> So let's have a look at the overall agenda today. First, at first, I will answer the the essential question: Why? So it means why am I going to do this? Why do I want to do this? Why does it make sense to, uh, yeah, make a uh, hold a presentation about this topic and use this batch message listener uh, in combination with Teradata Advantage? The uh, second point is about the overall picture. Here I will show you the high-level process before going into the details. This is uh, when switching over to the detailed approach. And uh, this part will give you more detailed insight about uh, implementation and technical components regarding uh, Kafka as well as uh, Mule and Teradata. And after this, I will have uh, finished the theoretical part and will give you a live demonstration uh, showing how batch message listener can perform when being used uh, in combination with Teradata Advantage. And yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a real challenge as we have numerous technical components which are expected or have to be flawlessly work in order to make this uh, live demonstration. Yeah, and after this, then we uh, the last point is then the wrap up, and then you have the opportunity to, uh, yeah, to post your or place your questions, and I will try to answer them as good as I can. So, let's see about the why. Why is this? Uh, what is the essential question? I would like to answer this with just one sentence that uh, summarizes the whole thing in my opinion, namely the fact that Teradata Vantage is a system that is optimized for parallel bulk inserts. So for those of you who have never heard of Teradata Vantage before, uh, just think of uh, a traditional relational database management system, which is used here for, a process or for importing data for, uh, via Kafka topics. Uh, actually, Teradata Vantage uh, is continuously being enriched with more uh, components for analytical purposes and transforming and uh, getting insights into unstructured data. However, here it is sufficient just to think of a relational database management systems just as, uh, for example, or Oracle or MySQL. So the database capabilities are the essential ones. And Teradata Vantage is a system which is, uh, uses a shared nothing architecture, so it's uh, optimized for massively parallel processing. And you can also uh, illustrate this this way I did. So Teradata absolutely likes it when you are supplying data on a parallel way and it bulk. So this means uh, numerous um, messages or data rows per request and Teradata absolutely dislikes it. This is the other one uh, extreme when uh, yeah, your data is uh, split into single rows or single messages uh, or even uh, processed sequentially. 
Now, this is exactly this, which um, with the Apache uh, Kafka uh, batch message listener will enable us to do to uh, work with Teradata Vantage for exactly the purpose it has been designed for. So just keep this one fact in mind. It's also interesting whenever you work with Teradata Vantage, no matter whether in uh, combination with Mule or um, another source system or another uh, data integration product. Now let's switch to the overall picture. So. The overall picture starts with two components. The first one is a source system, which is supposed to deliver its data to a target system, which is uh, implemented via Teradata Vantage. So we, for simplicity, we assume that data is uh, intended to be imported into one single target table here, one single target table. and. The middleware is Apache Kafka, where the source system can publish its data to uh, the topics. So uh, Kafka will uh, serve here as uh, the source for importing data into a uh, Terra data advantage. And of course, uh, topic the topic can be um, partitioned. So in order to also uh, yeah, uh, allow you, for example, to uh, when you make use of the seek operator for re-importing data to do this on a more fine granular level. So then now it's the point where the Mule API comes into play, namely when it's about to import the data or to consume the data published into the Kafka topic, namely by means of the batch message listener. The batch message listener has uh, the unique op a capability to uh, consume numerous uh, messages simultaneously and uh, to store them as an array, which will allow you to process numerous messages as an array. And so within a single uh, mule correlation and also a territory advantage transaction. And after uh, consume or after um, receiving the data via the listener, there's uh, already one step which is here implemented here in order to filter invalid messages. So it might be, be that um, you have messages which are basically not, uh, cannot be processed as they are not in the valid, for example, JSON format, uh, we assume here. In that case, it's good to uh, already filter them in advance so that they will not disturb the uh, up following process when importing the data into Terra Data Vantage. And I'm going, I've implemented it that way that I will uh, lock this invalid messages into a separate lock table that will give us insight which messages exactly were not be, uh, could not be uh, processed and successfully imported. So this means when performing a an upfalling bulk insert, we have already uh, cleansed the data a little bit. And now this is the point where we try to um, yeah, perform this bulk insert. So this means uh, to insert the data in, in an array format into the Teradata ter target table. This can succeed just in the first try. This is the uh, the case we uh, expect and hope so that it will work as then we can commit our uh, whole uh, transaction and are finished here. However, we also have to take into account that there are messages in the array that cannot be processed in the expected way. And this is uh, yeah, some kind of disadvantage which has to be taken into account, namely when uh, dealing with an array, uh, array is going to be processed by the you know, everything or nothing uh, principle. So this means if there's just one single message uh, that is incompatible with the uh, expected format, uh, the whole array would fail if you uh, do not have some kind of plan B. And this also made me to um, invent the plan B, namely in case of failure. I am going to um, process the array, mess array messages on a single message uh, level. 
by, you by means of the parallel for each scope in the mule apis this means in that case i'm going to perform single inserts just if i have used the class the single message listener this is uh, done so that the the result that is achieved is equivalent to if i had processed the, the messages on a on a single message level in advance and of course there also might uh, fail, failures might occur as we have might have incompatible messages in that case uh, the log table is populated just the same way when dealing with uh, generally invalid messages so and after this part no matter how many messages could be uh, successfully inserted into my target table which not i can also uh, commit i can also commit my uh, my request and i'm done with it so this is the over a picture when it's about making use of the batch message listener all right then let's get to the detailed approach so what am i going to do uh, in detail when making use of all these uh, implementing all these components shown before the first one we are having, going to have a look at when it's about to configure the Apache Kafka consumer. As you can see on my slide, there is a bunch of parameters that can be adjusted when uh, configuring the Kafka consumer. So you, you might be familiar with this already a little bit when you have uh, made use of uh, a single message listener uh, so far. And yeah, of course, there's a bunch of parameters and also dependencies that have to be taken into account the first one i would <coughs> emphasize here is the default fetch minimum size so this is stands for uh, the size or uh, the vol data volume which has to be um, yeah has to be reached before the um, the batch message listener even starts his job so and when working with Teradata Vantage, I personally recommend to um, configure those parameters so that uh, the volume corresponds to approximately 1,000 messages. So this means that you, when your batch message listener starts uh, its job, then you can be sure that, the, that you are uh, supplied with at least 1,000 messages that can be processed. It, uh, doesn't make sense too much uh, for performance reasons to uh, deal with uh, less messages. The second parameter is the default record limit. So this stands for the number of uh, records. Uh, this means uh, the, namely the number of messages that will be consumed as an array. This should also uh, match the def um, default match maximum size that you can also configure, namely uh, this is a default set to one megabyte. One megabyte is fine in my opinion, as uh, it's also a recommended payload size uh, when, the, when making use of a mule API. However, you should pay attention that uh, uh, that uh, the, the record limit uh, corresponds at least so um, a payload size which corresponds to 1000 messages. The third parameter is about the fetch maximum wait timeout. So this means how long the batch message listener uh, will wait before starting his job, no matter whether the default fetch minimum size has been reached or not. So this means if you uh, see that, or if you realize that uh, the default match minimum size that you are expected to uh, process is frequently missed as uh, the population frequency is not uh, sufficient for this, then you are recommended to increase this uh, parameter. So until it's, uh, so until uh, it has become the exception that uh, you uh, are missing this, the default match minimum size. And another parameter, this is one, kind of the dependencies uh, I mentioned. The request timeout has to be 
at least as long as the fetch maximum wait timeout. I personally recommend to uh, set this one minute longer than the maximum wait timeout, as otherwise uh, the maximum um, wait timeout, you can never make use of it as the request timeout will be reached before. And this, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is some kind of dependency you have to pay to pay attention to. All right, so. One question, Lars, before we uh, move on. <coughs> Rahul got an important question. How can we allow source system, say external client, publish data directly to Kafka? Does Kafka support or provide any direct endpoint for clients to use to publish the data directly to a topic? Like how are you going to publish to Kafka topic basically? Well, uh, in my personal experience, uh, the published process is also be done by means of a mule API as the Apache Kafka connector is also equipped with, uh, with a publish, uh, scope which is very easy to use so i also if you are uh, equipped with mule i recommend to make use of this okay thanks for That's that my personal recommendation and yeah. okay okay now let's get to another more detailed thing namely when it's about to extract the payload from the best batch message here um you have to be aware that uh, the payload uh, arrives in a more specific format and uh, more um, difficult to um, traverse format than when you make use of the single batch uh, single message listener and in that case i as you you may know when there is some kind of issue when uh, transforming or traversing data, your uh, data weave part will uh, yeah, blow up and uh, the whole API process will abort. In that case, I personally recommend that you implement a function that will allow you to filter and the message that cannot be passed into the expected format. So this is the invalid message part on the overall picture and for this um, data we've offers a very useful module named runtime which uh, includes among other things the try function that will allow you to uh, perform a step and also catch uh, an error which might occur because uh, your data is not in the expected format i have been inspired here by another blog post i also uh, mentioned here I recommend you have a look at this and this is for me one essential component when um yeah when catching um errors during reading uh, messages of the array and uh, filtering them afterwards so if you make use of it then you just have to be aware um yeah if you have a look at the at the usage point so um the guard function uh, function as is make use of the try function it's uh, you are required to uh, make us or create a lambda expression like this one don't know why it is i think this is due to uh, the way the try function has been implemented and this function is being used when reading the value in that case i um, expect a json format and in case of a failure so I am able to convert this instead of uh, an error that will make my API abort completely. I will be able to uh, convert this into a null value. And then in that case, I will be able to distinguish between uh, a successful uh, reading or yeah, successful processing of a message and a failure that will lead me to uh, lock this into my lock table. <laughs> So when it's about it comes to insert the data into the data we database, there's some something you have to pay attention to when using bulk value um, the bulk insert uh, operator. Um, it expects you to have all um, parameters, namely all fields in your payload, explicitly. 
So this means if you have, for example, some uh, optional fields in your payload, which are then implicitly null, then you have to convert them into explicit null values. And otherwise, your Mule API will complain that it could not find a parameter uh, named by the fields uh, in the payload. So this can be easily done with a separate mapping as shown here, which will uh, convert uh, implicit null values into explicit null values. This is uh, something, in my opinion, which is uh, not uh, Teradata specific. So it can, I think, it's uh, also important or interesting for uh, other database systems. So then, when it comes to parallel processing, there's another very useful function from the Arrays module named the divide by. The divide by operator will allow you to uh, segment an array into a customer customable uh, size, uh, namely in that case 100. So if I uh, receive an array of 10,000 elements, then I can convert this into uh, into 100 subarrays. So why am I going to do this? This is the reason is simple. Since mu4, there is a parallel for each scope new, and the parallel for each scope only supports um, processing of single elements. So uh, as opposite to the classic for each scope, which allows you to configure a batch size, parallel for each always has a batch size of one. But you can overcome this limitation just by create sub arrays. In that case, even a single element of your, of your array will also be an array in fact. So this is a very useful combination, the divide by and the parallel for each that will allow you to uh, pe perform uh, the processing of your array in parallel and still make use of arrays. All right, and as Teradata of course is uh, optimized for bulk and sets and you uh, make use of arrays, then you are required to make use of the bulk insert component, which is uh, especially designed for the arrays. So you might have wondered if there is also some Teradata and not mule specific aspect. Here's the answer. There is something, namely when it's about to design the target table where the data is supposed to be inserted into. So in that case, you, <coughs> for those of you who um, have not uh, worked with Teradata before, <coughs> let me uh, mention some key facts um, about the table design. So usually a table in Teradata has a so-called primary index which will, um, yeah, which will determine how the data is going to be distributed in the parallel architecture. So in, case, uh, in fact, um, the columns of your table that, ma that make up the primary index will be um, <clears throat> supplied to a hash function and uh, a hash code will be imp uh, computed and determine where a row of a, a data, um, where a table row is stored. So this means in that case, when you have a hash collision, then you will also have some delay in your data processing as uh, several rows might have the same hash code and then uh, they have to wait for each other before they can be inserted into the database. So in that case, you are recommended to make a, use a combination of columns that will in fact, never repeat. And in that case, the best combination, in my opinion, is to make to use the mule correlation ID, which is expected to be unique per API call, and an ascending row number by payload. This one, the mule correlation ID, you know, is um, is uh, available via the standard expression correlation ID, and an ascending number by Oh, sorry. And the ascending number by payload can easily be implemented by using uh, the index of the actual array you are uh, processing. So when when designing your target table that way, then you uh, maximize the chance chance of a maximum parallelism, as there will be no delay due to hash collisions. Now. 
when it's about handling errors. So, so what errors can be occur? We have several errors. We have, for example, I, I've already um, spoke about the errors which might occur when a message is invalid. We may, might also uh, might also have irreproducible database um, errors when, for example, my database system is not available or even a reproducible when the data is uh, valid JSON, but still uh, not in the expected structure. In general, I recommend when you uh, block problematic messages, as I'm <clears throat> going to do it here with my log table, you um, <clears throat> are recommended to make use of the message attributes of a Kafka topic messages ranging from the key and the creation timestamp as, and the partition and the offset. So this will give you uh, the most detailed information for looking for uh, the message and have a look what's the problem with it. So when it's about to um, irreproducible database issues, for example, um, your database system is not available, I recommend to uh, look for the error type database connectivity as if your database system, for example, is not available, because, for example, undergoing maintenance, then your Mule API will return an error type database connectivity. You are, <clears throat> um, and you should also be aware that when making use of, uh, for example, a parallel for each scope, as mentioned before, or for example, a scatter getter scope, which will allow you to populate several target tables, uh, database tables simultaneously, then your database connectivity uh, error will be returned as a nested error nested in a mule composite routing error. And the mule composite routing might even be nested in another mule composite routing, namely when you combine the parallel for each scope and the scatter getter component. So in that case, you are recommended to make a use of a data weave expression like this, namely um, looking at errors on the top level and as well as all down levels using the multi-value selector. In case that there are no elements that way, just make use of the default uh, construct to uh, catch null values and then you can, uh, after then, filter them by the database connectivity. So this is a data weave expression that will use uh, yeah, some uh, of the uh, advanced components in order to enable you to uh, reliable uh, identify these kind of issues. And when it's about Teradata, you are also recommend to uh, you look for Teradata specific error codes as they will also um, yeah, give you a, a reliable insight what kind of error has, for example, occurred. Here are some examples for a Teradata error codes, which stand for irreproducible database issues. So in that case, your, your API is uh, supposed to, um, or should be implemented, you perform a retry instead of uh, abort or lock the message. And <clears throat> then, this point deals with uh, yeah with uh, processing the the array um, on an on an individual item level. As I mentioned before, you can use the parallel for each scope for them. Then, namely, when we have a reproducible database issue, this might occur when your uh, message has um, a valid JSON structure, but the exact structure does not match your uh, your expectations. Then, in that case, you will achieve that uh, the overall result is equivalent as if you had processed it via the single message listener. So, and if there still is any other uh, error or database issue, then I recommend that you rely on the default behavior when it's about uh, dealing with uh, errors during uh, Kafka data consumption, namely the re-delivery. So this is, by the way, this is uh, an interesting contrast to, for example, message queue products such as ActiveMQ, which will um, transfer uh, 
a message into a dead letter queue instead of a retry. So if you want to perform a retry in a message queue, we have to implement it separately. In Kafka, it's just the other way around. In that case, you have to implement uh, a filtering and logging of erroneous messages and the standard behavior is redelivery. All right, so much for my theoretical part uh, can we of take the presentation. Yeah. Can we can we take we can, questions? yeah. <clears throat> so Sh shall I also have a look at the chat? Uh, yeah, so if you take a look at the okay. chat, uh, if you scroll a little bit up. <coughs> Yeah, a little bit up. Little up so. Yeah, from from here, like from here, a uh, little bit down. If that is a Java application, Ajay, he is asking a question. If that is a Java application, we need to create a Java publisher application to post messages onto Kafka topic. Okay. Uh... I think this goes uh, beyond my experience so far as I have uh, exclusively used uh, Mule APIs in order to publish messages to Kafka. I also know that uh, Kafka in its uh, base installation uh, encompasses uh, command uh, line uh, capabilities to uh, publish messages to a topic. However, I, I suppose there uh, there should be some uh, standard uh, libraries in Java that will allow, allow you to do this, but I would also have to uh, look at them. Well, yeah, that's that's fair, Lars. We can even discuss in the end also with mm -hmm. Ajay. Then Akhil is asking one question: okay. Is the configuration process for Confluent Kafka same as Apache Kafka? This is a question I will be able to uh, answer you when my employer will introduce uh, Confluent Kafka. <laughs> we are planning this, however, we haven't succeeded so far. So uh, Confluent is uh, also, I've heard from them of, and I know that Confluent has some advantages compared to Apache Kafka, uh, but, uh, but I, haven't, I haven't seen the exact configuration so far. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh... We will ask this question to the wider community in the end. If somebody else might have used Confluent Kafka in the past, uh, Tejasvi mm -hmm. is asking a question. Can't we filter such poison messages at Kafka layer itself? At Kafka layer itself, uh, I guess no, as uh, Kafka is only for storing the data and not for, uh, has no capabilities of uh, filtering and so. So uh, the only chance uh, of uh, doing this at another place is to, uh, when the publisher himself um, serves for uh, this data quality. I don't think that, Cap that Apache Kafka has such capabilities. So this uh, theoretical, it has to be done uh, just before the publish uh, step. Okay. Uh, Ajay makes a yeah. comment. I hope it uses TCP IP communication protocol internally to connect to Kafka cluster and publish messages to a specific topic. So he is uh, making a mm. comment there. Uh, mm. Any insights on that, Lars? Any insider use site C so um, to connect to Kafka and push it to uh, well when it's about a mule API, I guess so that it uses a TCP IP. However, I don't know how, how about uh, other uh, other options such as uh, we mentioned before Java, maybe, but oh. no, no guarantee so far. No problem. Uh, yeah. Tejasvi is asking another question. What's the difference between parallel consumer count and consumer amount configs in the batch message listener? Parallel consumer count. I'm not sure, sure if I have I got the question right. So what is exactly the parallel consumer uh, count and consumer in the batch message? I think it was about uh, it's about the the slide uh, dealing with the with the configuration. Is that right? Correct. I think so. The, 
Okay, so I'm not sure what what exactly do you mean by the by the parallel um, parallel consumer count and the consumer amount count thing. Uh, Oh, we let's have, do one thing uh, after we the have, demo. Uh, let's, yeah. let's do one thing after the demo. I will enable the mic for uh, Tejasvi so that you know uh, uh, he or she can you know provide us more insights. No problem. We can go uh, on the yeah. next question from Madhu. Is there a filter setting on batch message listener to consume only specific messages from Kafka topic based on filtering message? Yeah. Yeah. So I can say that the default record limit will will limit exactly your number of records. So it's just uh, it's it has nothing to do with the volume, just just with the number. And uh, the other one, the other one here, the maximum is related to the size. So if that was the question, you are just recommended so to configure them just so that uh, they are comparable and match. So it, okay. So, any other questions so far? Yeah, Vera has a Is question. Is there a filter setting on? Based. Is there a filter setting on batch message listener to consume only specific messages from Kafka topic based on filtering by message attributes? I'm almost sure that it will not have this, but we can also have a look at this one when it's about a batch message listener. So, what can we configure here? This is the batch message listener in my API implementation. So let's have a look at it. Okay. So we have uh, general parameters, so there's nothing about filtering. This is a literary policy and advanced only is related to a reconnection strategy. So, um, no, unfortunately, there is not uh, a possibility like this one. Okay. Uh, this is the reason why I've, I've implemented, I put this effort into it. <laughs> uh, Vera has a question. When isolation level yeah. is read uncommitted and auto offset reset set to earliest, does the consume still reads already committed messages? Does the consumer still read already committed messages? Well, this is uh, a topic I also haven't dealt with so far, but I can uh, tell you that I personally uh, recommend to use the manual acknowledgement mode, namely when configuring the consumer, configuring the consumer to set the uh, the acknowledgement mode to manual and to perform it manually as in other cases you will might have an unexpected commit and then there will no uh, committed messages uh, uh, be read again and if you want to uh, if you want to uh, read them again then uh, you are recommended to make use of the seek operator here of the apache kafka seen here the seek one that will allow you to um perf to trigger uh to trigger a reconsume of messages on uh on a partition level from a specific offset um, on starting with a specific offset parameter okay i think we are good uh Last, we no. can proceed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any more questions, or no, I shall we, we now go to my live demo? Yes, we let's can have a look at the live demo. Okay, and then, uh, now let's see. Yeah. First, I will let me check if Teradata Vantage is up and running here. Um, my Chrome terminal. So, PDA state says, okay, run started. So, Teradata Vantage is up and running. My Kafka also, 
Okay, is also running. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Uh, some for introduction. So my API implementation will uh, contains, for example, here the the uh, flows to um, control the consumer state. I will I have included a consumer and a batch consumer in order to perform a performance comparison, and I have also the uh, yeah the option to generate random payloads. So in the following, I will go will populate, uh, ran, generate and uh, generate random data and populate my Kafka topic with it. And we will see how the uh, consumers uh, how are going to process them and how fast. So I think the next step is to run my API. So why and why the API is deploying? Let me see my Terminator target table. So no, it's it's about fact data containing orders. It's empty. Let's see if it's empty. Yeah, it's okay. No rows returns. Yeah. Okay, my API is deployed. And as you can see here, we have the Kafka topics named quick start events and two consumer groups, one for the single message listener and the other one for the batch message listener. So let's see what happens when I will populate 1000 random values into my Kafka topics. Okay, succeeded after four seconds. Now let's have a look at the Kafka topics and the leg both legs say 1000 messages. You can see here one of them, for example, so some simply structured order data. So now let's see when I start the single message consumer, how long does it take? This is my endpoint for change the consumer state. So namely switching the, the flow, which list, uh, has the single message listener in its source from stopped to started. Now it started and now when we refresh it here, then we can see that it's, it's now it's green instead of yellow and then the lag is decreasing. Okay, 570 messages remaining. 296 messages, messages remaining. 92. And now it's now finished. Okay, let's switch over to my target table and see what's in it. Yeah, correctly. 1000 rows have now have been arrived in my target table based on the order data, which was um, published in the Kafka topic. So in addition to the, um, in addition to uh, the fields here related to the order data, I've also included a technical timestamp that will say when exactly the row has arrived in the date and target table as well as the mule correlation ID and the row number. Because the following queries now will show how well this has been performed if we 
execute this query, then we can see this has taken approximately 30 seconds to process 1,000, 1,000 messages by means of the, met, uh, of the message listener. So for a comparison to the batch message listener, now I will have to empty the target table. Now it's empty and now let's see what happens when I also start my batch message listener consumer. It's also started. Let's see what happens to it. It's already empty here. And now let's have a look at the target table. 1000 rows once again, and the performance is, was not even so uh, one second here. So it's significantly faster than the single message listener. And one more interesting thing is when you can also, as I have stored, included the mule correlation ID in my target table. You can, now can also see um, how uh, the size of the arrays, uh, which uh, the batch message listener has created for the further consumption. So if you have a look at this one, okay, did it with everything in one, one array. There you can see how fast Teradata Advantage can process 1,000 rows when it's only when it's uh, supplied as an array. Okay, now let's empty the target table once again. Stop the single message consumer and continue with the batch message listener. Oh. Okay, now it has been stopped, I think. Yeah, looks good. Now I will supply 10,000 messages to my batch message consumer. And now, now it's already listening, so let's see how it performs when consuming seriously to publishing. Okay. Right, so 9,621 here. 5,000 remaining. And empty again. So my target table says, Select orders, 10,000 rows. Okay. How long did it take? In that case, 33 seconds. So the batch message listener is still faster with, uh, with so this means in my laptop, the batch message listener can process 10,000 messages faster than the single message listener can per, per process 1,000 messages. And now, now when having a look at the mu correlation ID, let's see, have a look at the batch sizes. So in that case, we can see the, in that case, we had uh, five correlations, so five API calls and the array sizes ranging with the arrays uh, ranging from 300 elements to 3000. So this is okay and it has been uh, processed in parallel. So this is one thing, a very important part of my live demonstration showing that performance comparison and how fast also and the advantages, performance advantages you can achieve when using the batch message listener. The second one now it's about um, dealing with errors. So let's empty my target table again here. And now let's produce an irreproducible error, namely um, logging my user off in the boarding session. So in that case, you will 
the API will not be able to reach the database and then the messages are expected to be uh, held back in the lag until uh, database system is available again. So I'm going to revoke the log on from the database user used by the Mule API. And I'm also going to abort the remaining session. So there will be no access to the database system after that. And I will supply another 10,000 messages. Okay, and let's clean my lock before. So already see that an error of type database connectivity has been occurred and and also a logger message I have uh, created for this case, then I'm going to propagate the error to my parent flow. So we are achieving the standard behavior of uh, the Kafka connector, namely performing a redelivery at a later point in time. And let's see if there are still 10,000 messages in my lag. Yeah. 10,000 messages, and this is expected to continue. So let's wait a moment. It's going to be in, a, in an interval of approximately 30 seconds, as if there is some irreproducible issue, it's, it, ah, now we have it again, and once again, yeah, here we can see the Teradata error message and Mule will be recognized as, as a database connectivity issue. And the logger, let's say, irreproducible. Yeah, and the logger has once again, yeah, has been used once again. Yeah, this is exactly I guess here, yeah. In that case, I will I will simulating this by uh, setting a variable standing for a static cost to 503, namely service unavailable. In that case, the error will be propagated. And in other cases, so if I'm having uh, an error which is uh, then expected to be reproducible, I'm going to continue this here. Okay. So as you can see, and oh, try it once again, I think the, co the lock has become more. Okay, now let's see what happens when I grant the lock on again <coughs> to my database user. In that case, the lag is expected to come. Yeah, we have just 6,000 messages remaining and it's empty again. So you see, it's going to recover immediately whenever the irreproducible issue is, uh, has been disappeared. Okay, now one more thing when it's about reproducible errors, reproducible errors and uh, logging in my target table. So now I'm going to produce a reproducible error by including null values in my data which will not be able to be uh, imported into my da uh, database table as the columns are defined as non-nullable. So now let's see what happens now. The 10,000 have been published to the Kafka topic. And as we can see, we have 8,200 messages here. 8,200. Now it's 6,000. So as you can see, it's going to be slowed down the process as now the many messages are now being processed on a single message level due to this reproducible error. 2,000 remaining.
Okay, now it's empty. And now let's see what has been arrived in my target table. We have in my target table now instead of 10,000, 9,990 rows and my table containing the failed imports. Where is it? Okay, here now has 10 rows containing these topic keys and timestamp and offset. So let's look for one of them. So this, I can use this and looking for this in my topic. This is the one and as I can see, oh, this one, the item number is null, which is not expected to be null as it's part of the logical key of my order. So this message uh, has been locked as failed in my target table and the target table, uh, this lock table will allow me to have a more detailed look at the message. And we can also, but the lag is still, sorry, the lag is still, still zero so and this result is the same as I as I have had processed the messages separately and individually. The last one now is a reproducible error when publishing uh, an incomplete JSON so which will be filtered in advance. So let's post a message publish a message with the key one, two, three or five and an incomplete JSON. So let's say message is hello world, stopping with the W. And now let's see whether this has as arrived in my log table. Not so far, okay. Hasn't the problem here. This is not the expected result. Let's see about the lag. Teradata batch consumer. Uh -huh. Do I have the message with the key one, two, three, four, five? Oh no, so it looks, it seems that it hadn't, has not been published here. So let me see, maybe I have let me try it again. So, um, this is my Kafka, my bootstrap server, and I also do have configured it in the same way. Okay. Let me do it once again. Mm, no. Um, okay, now it's gone. Let me once again one, two, three, four, five, and message hello W. So, one more try. Okay. He has committed a message. So now let's see in my table. Now we have 11 instead of 10 rows. And then uh, we have no entry related to topic key one through three or five. And if I take a look at this one once again, search for it, then I'm going to get this message, which is already indicated as a bad string here in my uh, uh, web front end. So this is one example of. Um, of a message which has been filtered in advance as it was basically invalid and filtered before even the database processing had been started. All right, this completes my live demo. Let me see, I planned to do a performance comparison between single and batch message listener. I showed you how to handle irreproducible database issues as well as handling and logging problematic message problematic message data and reproducible database issues yeah for those of you who are interested which components made up my 
overall implementation. I've included them on this slide. So and uh, including the links for downloading it. This also includes my implementation, the API implementation, which is uh, also available for free download on uh, GitHub for those of you who might uh, interest, are interested in uh, taking an even uh, deeper and more detailed look at this one. All right, now it's about questions and answers. First of all, amazing demonstration, Lars. Thank you. Let me stop the recording and... Uh... Mm.